Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing the 12900K, aka Intel's older link. This is the flagship model, and we actually have results here comparing it against the Ryzen 9 5950X. And I have to tell you that older lake is shaping up to be pretty impressive, especially given that this is most likely not a final sample. So we have a processor here which is reporting to feature eight performance cores and eight efficient cores. Of course, this is um, 24 threads total because the efficient cores do not have Intel's hyper-threading technology. The results were run under Windows 11, which does actually seem to improve the performance of Alder Lake, although we've touched on this several times in the past. The memory that was also being paired with the system is also 4800 MTS, which is reasonably fast memory, but certainly not the fastest you can get. Now, it is worth noting that this is a Geekbench result, Geekbench 5 to be specific. However, it does give us a fair indication as to how this processor will perform under different workloads. Although, I'm hearing that games is probably going to be where Alder Lake excels, but more on that in just a moment. It's also worth noting that the clock frequency, well, yeah, it's not so much being read correctly. For example, <laughs> it's actually being shown as 29 gigahertz on the detailed page. I'm probably going to say that Intel didn't manage to get 29 gigahertz out of the 12900K, although, hey, if they did, that would be very impressive. As for the result then, well, it's 1893 for the single core score. I'm going to call it 1900 for my sanity and 17,299, I'm going to call it 17.3 again for my sanity. So if you compare that against various benchmarks from Zen Freeze lineup, such as the 5950X, we have a result here which actually is pretty impressive. So Intel are around 12% faster than the 5950X in single core performance, but in multi-core it's not quite such a big deal, it's around 3%. However, it is worth noting that these results are that much faster, in fact, than the 11900K, which is built on Rocket Lake. In fact, well, yeah, I mean, again, of course, Geekbench results can certainly vary quite significantly for obvious reasons, depending on system configuration. Rocket Lake is certainly quite close in single-core score, but multi-core, the 11900K uh, does lose by a substantial margin. My guess is, though, that this is not the final rankings of the processor. I do believe, just speaking to people in the industry, that there's still quite a bit left in the tank for the 12900K. Now, allegedly, it does go up to 5.3 gigahertz. My general feeling, kind of speaking to people, is that this processor is going to do quite well against the Ryzen Vcache CPUs from AMD. Although, I suspect that we're going to see benchmarks kind of jump around, depending on the application. I mean, it just makes logical sense that AMD are releasing the Ryzen Vcache processors as kind of a, well, just a product offering to compete against Alder Lake. Although Alder Lake is going to be relatively short-lived compared to what you might expect, because obviously Raptor Lake will follow, um, you know, Q3 next year, which again is a fairly sizable jump in performance. I'm actually really looking forward to Alder Lake. I feel that, you know, just chatting to people in the industry, the general consensus that Intel, from what I can understand, is actually pretty positive. I've mentioned a couple of times that from my discussions with people who, let's say, have um, knowledge of the inner workings of Intel, they kind of knew that they were going to be in for a painful few years. Like, yeah, the pain kind of started with um, Zen 2, but Zen 3, especially at launch, they couldn't really compete. And let's just be honest, while you can say that the 11th generation series does have a couple of standouts, like the 11 400, pretty good for the price. Overall, they just don't have anything to compete in multi-thread in particular against, let's say, the 5900, let alone the 5950X. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Intel actually come back over the next few generations of chips. Quite frankly, I think that we do need the competition. I feel competition is always good. And yeah, the next thing I would love to discuss with you guys, actually, is the RTX 3090 Super. I'd like to give credit, by the way, to Kobe7Kimmy, who's tweeted this. So we have an update to the specifications that Grayman released yesterday. 
the TGP is now a eye-watering 450 watts. So let's hope Gigabyte, well, they're not your power supply because, uh, well, I would probably go into a fallout shelter if that's true, um, if you've got a Gigabyte power supply near you. Anyway, uh, as for the rest of the specifications, 10,752 FP32. That's identical, of course, to what we heard yesterday and basically the same as the A600. Interestingly, there is no NV link with this particular SKU. Furthermore, the uh, core itself is apparently GA102 350-A1. And finally, we have the memory running at 21 GBPS. That's actually a lot of memory bandwidth. That's over one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. Now, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to me how well this performs. I don't think it's going to be substantially faster to be honest, it's probably going to be maybe 3 to 7%, depending on the application, depending on what they do with the clock frequencies. Maybe there is a significant difference in clocks or something like that, but frankly, I don't think there is. I'm hearing it could be around 5%, but who knows? I will say that I've spoken to several people who are quite familiar with NVIDIA's plans, and I cannot find anyone that has heard of this particular SKU. It is possible that Grayman and co 7 Kimmy simply have a source that, well, basically knows more. But yeah, I mean, I'm kind of on the fence because basically this, uh, this GPU is supposed to launch this year, 2021. So I mean, you wouldn't imagine it would be too much longer until we start to see actual real leaks of this thing, like performance results or images or something like that. I'll be very interested to see, though, if it is real, what the pricing strategy would actually end up being. Oh, and one last thing, since we're talking about Copy 7 Kimmy, he's also tweeted that we will probably see the Adelace, um GPU come out a little bit earlier, although it seems like it's not still going to be until Q4 2022. I've also heard some report that it could be Q3, although honestly, I'm not too convinced that this is the case. Um, that's roughly also the release date, of course, that we're going to see RDNA 3 as well. I think that's just about it for this video. Um, yeah. Also, I'm sorry for not being on camera for this video, but normal service should return probably tomorrow. Basically, I'm almost done with this AMD project, so I've just been taking some photos and getting some benchmarks and more, more importantly, doing a lot of editing. So because of that, I'm swapping out cards and it's just kind of, yeah, just one of those things. But with that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.